Salutations, friend. Ancient ghost stories, like many folk tales and fables, are amalgamations of history and legend meant to entertain as well as educate, imparting cultural beliefs and practices or lessons in morality, especially when it comes to the importance of proper burial and honoring of the dead. This story dates from around 1000 BCE, but some scholars think it could be a much older story, perhaps copied and retold on the particular pieces of pottery upon which it was found. It concerns one Khonsamhab, high priest of Amun-Ra, king of all the gods, who resides in and presides over the temples of Karnak in the ancient Egyptian city of Thebes, or modern-day Luxor. The ghost in the story lived a thousand years before High Priest Khonsamhab's time, perhaps during the reign of King Mentuhotep II, whose mortuary temple was the first to be built upon what would become the extensive necropolis of Thebes. The story was found inscribed on four pottery fragments, each of which are now scattered across four European museums, but the beginning and ending of the story are missing, as well as a middle part. So yours truly has imagined and included replacements. And in the description, you'll find reference links for further reading. Let's begin. Konsumhab and the Ghost of Nebusemek Konsumhab was the high priest of Amun-Ra, king of all the gods, at the temples of Karnak on the eastern bank of the Nile River in the great city of Thebes. One morning, as Konsumhab was in his chambers preparing for the day, the priest's peace was disturbed by an unusual cacophony coming from the streets below. Konsumhab went to see what was causing the commotion and found temple guards restraining a disheveled young man his wide, bloodshot eyes wild with desperation, his repeated request for the help of a priest all but lost in the shouting. The appearance of the high priest himself dulled the roar of the gathering crowd, and upon seeing him, the young man fainted from the guard's grasp, only to revive hours later under the care of the high priest's personal attendants. "'What has happened? How can I help you?' the high priest asked. The young man appeared weak, but spoke clearly and with grave conviction as he told a most remarkable story. He was one of many children born to a craftsman north of the village of Daryl Medina, where they all lived and worked alongside his many uncles and cousins and extended family. They were all very happy and successful, until one night, very recently, when a strange disturbance changed everything. It was the middle of the night when a loud bellowing woke us all from our beds, the youth said. These eerie lamentations were accompanied by sounds of crashing and smashing and breaking, and as various family members converged in the main workshop, they were bewildered to find it empty, with no evidence of any broken pottery or anything. They searched high and low as best they could in the pitch blackness of night, but couldn't find a soul. The disturbance melted into the morning light, but that night, it began anew. The same bellowing and breaking, and again there was no cause to be found. This continued every night for many nights, and soon gossip spread that the family was cursed or haunted. Probably both, poor things. People had stopped coming to buy their pottery and were avoiding them as if they had sickness. And they were sick. None had had a good night's sleep in over a week, or perhaps two... The youth had lost count. His family didn't want to bother the great high priest with their troubles, not yet at least. But after another sleepless night spent searching, the young man set off for Karnak before the first light of morning. Konsumhab had listened silently and attentively, and as soon as the young man finished his story, he promised to investigate the situation personally. The high priest's promise renewed the youth's strength, and he insisted he was ready to leave at once. Despite the complaints and concerns of his closest attendants and advisors, Konsumhab set off alone with the youth, who, as they ferried west across the Nile, took great pride in telling Konsumhab stories of his family, who for untold generations have made the finest pottery in the kingdom. The high priest found this claim to be true as he toured the homes and impressive workshops of the young man's many exhausted extended family members each of whom had their own theories as to what was causing their misfortune. An evil spirit, said one, 
An angry ghost, said another. No, no, a sad ghost, argued another. It's not a ghost at all, said one gruff uncle. It's our competitors trying to put us out of business. Not expecting their young son to return with the high priest of Amun-Ra, they fed Konsumhab the best of their simple everyday fare, which he enjoyed tremendously. And when it was time to go to sleep, he was led to the finest room and the finest house the family could offer. Konsumhab was comfortable in the cool, quiet darkness, and as he drifted into sleep, he wondered if he'd been tricked into a fool's journey. But no, he thought, there was something in the young man's face, and in the faces of his family. Faces that haunted his soundless dreams. Faces that greeted him after he was jolted awake by a deafening cry and the distant sound of pottery crashing into shards. Konsumham found the young man and several of his cousins and uncles waiting, and he followed them outside, where they intended to once again set about searching for the source of all this trouble. It was quite a dangerous endeavor to go looking for noises in the dark, and Konsumhab convinced them to return to their homes while he attempted to assess the situation. The high priest stood there in the darkness, listening with the same sincerity and silence he gave the young man when he told his story. And the longer he listened, the sadder he felt, and the more certain he became that this must be a restless ghost. Konsumhab tried to summon the ghost to him, for he knew that, until he put the wandering soul back to rest, the family would get no rest. But the ghost would neither appear nor stop its wailing, and after several failed attempts, the high priest Konsumhab requested a guide and torchlight so that he could make haste back to the temple to begin the necessary work. Note. This is where the pottery fragments begin. Konsumhab ferried back across the Nile, and when he reached his house, he immediately ordered offerings to be prepared for the restless ghost, saying, I will provide him with all sorts of good things when I go back. But first he needed more information, and as Konsumhab was the high priest of Amun-Ra, king of all the gods, he gathered the necessary ritual items and went up onto the roof of his house, where he invoked the gods of the sky and the gods of the land, southern, northern, Western, Eastern, and the gods of the necropolis, saying to them, Send me that noble spirit. And soon the spirit appeared to him, the shade of a man who once lived many centuries ago, and spoke in a voice which sounded both far and near. I am a ghost, you son, barred from my own tomb, and doomed to wander at night. Please tell me your name, and the names of your father and your mother, so that I may do what needs to be done. Nebuselik is my name. My father is Ankhmen, and my mother is Yotiemshas. Noble Nebuselik, please tell me what you want, and I will have it done for you. I will have a new sepulchre prepared, with an exquisite coffin of gold and zizophus wood, for you to rest in, and all the proper offerings and rituals, as befitting your position in life. What good is the warmth of a new sepulchre or coffin if they are exposed to bone-chilling winds, where I shiver from cold, without food or drink, unable to live in this world or the next? But I have no need for a flood of libations in my honor, for such offerings cannot reach me where I lay trapped in the suffocating darkness of my dank and decrepit tomb. Many have promised me what you offer, and they pour the libations and then forget about everything else. Consum Hab wept upon hearing the spirit's mournful tale. How badly you fare, without eating or drinking, without growing old or becoming young, without seeing sunlight or breathing fresh northerly breezes. Darkness is all you see each day, and by night you lament your predicament. When I was alive upon the earth, I was overseer of the treasury of the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, King Mentuhotep, bless his name. I was lieutenant of the king's army, having been the leader of my men and nigh to the gods. I went to rest in year 14 during the summer months. The king gave me my four canopic jars and my sarcophagus of alabaster, and he had done for me all that is done for one who fit in my position, laying me to rest in my tomb of ten cubits. But since then, my place of rest has rotted, forgotten, and now the ground beneath my grave has dropped away, and I am restless in a heap of rubble underground, where an unnaturally cold wind blows. Please tell me what you desire, and I will surely have it done for you. At the very least, I will have ten servants, five men, and five women, totally devoted to you, 
They will pour libation water for you, and I will have a sack of emmer delivered daily for you. And of course, the overseer of offerings, whom I know personally, will pour libation water for you. I will give you everything you need. Again, I say, what use are the things you would do, or your promises to do so? Like a tree deprived of sun, water, and air, like the dry, cracked stone of my tomb, I am crumbling away. Note, here a piece of the story is missing, but based on what comes next, let's assume that Konsamhab asks Nebusemek where his tomb is located and gets the answer he needs before the very wary spirit is pulled back to the cold, hard confines of his rocky resting place. Konsumhab tasked the three men who had guided him home with finding the tomb of Nebusemek, which they dutifully accepted and set forth to accomplish at once. They ferried west across the Nile, following the spirit's directions. Twenty-five cubits distant along the king's causeway at Deir al-Bari, and as they searched near the holy mortuary temple of King Mentuhotep, the men found what could only be the remains of the tomb of Nebusemek. The men quickly made their way back to Karnak and found High Priest Konsamhab officiating in the god's house of the Temple of Amun-Ra, king of all the gods. Hopefully you've returned, having found the excellent place for making the name of that noble spirit, Nebusemek, endure unto eternity, said Konsamhab, to which the three of them replied in unison, We have found the excellent place for making the name of that noble spirit endure. The three men sat down in his presence and made holiday, and the high priest's heart grew more and more joyful when they told him about what they had found. They were plotting and planning their project late into the night, and first thing the next morning, high priest Konsumhab summoned his temple deputy to inform him of its grand plans for honoring the noble Nebusemek. Konsumhab returned to the necropolis that night, and, well, the rest of the ending is lost to time. What follows is an imagined ending, also by yours truly. That night, after pouring libations upon the ancient sunken tomb, Konsamhab was visited by the grateful ghost of Nebusemek, whose once withered spectral visage now shone with the fine fullness of his living years. The high priest assured the spirit of his promise and told of all the plans already in progress, and he begged the ghost to cease its nighttime noise and mischief-making, for it was bringing the most terrible consequences upon a kind and humble family of potters who lived nearby. Nebusemek was a reasonable man in life, which made him a reasonable ghost in death, and he acquiesced to the high priest's terms. Konsamhab made camp near the tomb and slept there every night pouring libations and making offerings every morning, afternoon, and evening, until the renovation was finally complete, upon which a grand celebration was held in honor of noble Nebusemek, whose name now endures unto eternity. Thanks for listening. And remember, whether they're real or not, ghosts are everywhere.